All right, let's get going. Um, Tim, I'm uh, our interim VP of marketing. Uh, good to see a lot of uh, faces I recognize here, uh, including yeah, Mitchell and Richard's glasses. I think I love your glasses, Richard. Yeah. Thank you. I can even see myself in them. It's perfect. Um, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, the uh, thing here is uh, uh, apparently this can be recorded, so I hope somebody's recording it. Um, I'm gonna share the screen and then I'll, I'll share a link to the slide afterwards. All right. Let's see. Perfect. So I'm gonna repeat um, a few things you may have seen already. I, I repeat them because they're very important. Um, I think we all need to understand that if we can't understand those big things, you're not gonna understand any of the small updates. So I'm, I'm gonna try to spend a little bit of time, a few minutes every, um, every time I do these updates for the foreseeable future, kind of making sure we're in agreement on the overall marketing strategy that we're currently operating on. Um, this is probably the most important thing. Um, you know, if you don't understand this, if you don't agree with this, if you have any questions, if you think it misses the scenario or something like that, like, please speak up, ask a question, uh, talk to me after to do something. But it's, it's really important to get on the same page. Uh, the traditional software vendor model um, is we're a vendor on the right. Um, there's people who buy our software and there's developers. Uh, the very traditional way of doing this is uh, we as a vendor would go out to decision makers in that company, we'd one and dine them, um, they'd buy our software and they'd force their developers to use it. Um, that is still happening today in the world, that still is a very successful way to sell software actually. Uh, but um, you know, in the past decade or so, you've seen uh, the reverse model happen, kind of more of an open source uh, uh, bottoms up model, which is software developers find a software um, we like to use and you know we use it tremendously in open source form or something like that we go and ask our bosses for uh, a license because we need the extra professional features or we need support um, then we have the manager reach out to us and say you know get me a license for this um, so you know obviously this is something that is successful uh, for some companies you know Red Hat and, and uh, maybe Docker and others um, and it's also something that we do uh, quite a bit of, right? Historically, we've done a lot of that uh, through uh, our sales of GitLab. E. However, um, I think the, the way that we like to think about marketing at this point is the way that's a bit of a hybrid of the first two models. And uh, our conception of it is that we as a vendor um, have two jobs, really. The first one is to influence software developers. Um, and, and influence can mean just deliver a great uh, C version that they love to use and, and uh, you know, and, and are happy with. Um, and have the mechanism then flow back to us um, towards buyers. But the, uh, the thing that we absolutely need to do as well as a company is have an active arrow going towards buyers and, and bring some of that top-down mentality. I'm not saying move to a top-down model, but you know, very consciously reach out to buyers. So we'll, you'll see us do a mix of, of that. You know, so still talking quite a lot to software developers, hoping to uh, influence them and the tools they use and whether or not they come and then request a license from us. You'll see us also proactively reaching out to buyers, um, even if there is no developers in the company uh, using GitLab. And uh, you'll see us uh, making sure that we do a good job of closing the deals in the middle. Uh, so that's kind of the strategy. And it's again, very important that we all <laughs> understand this. And uh, you know, everything we do in marketing is a reflection of this. Um, so, you know, clearly kind of what's been missing um, and still is missing a little bit from um, our optics ever since uh, we kind of started, um, you know, doing things a bit differently in marketing uh, November, December last year, um, and particularly since February, is really working in that idea of a buyer persona. You know, GitLab as a company, we spend a lot of time thinking about developers as we should. We, we build a great product for developers and others. Um, and our marketing, you know, largely, you know, if you look at uh, you know, a blog or, or Twitter um, or events, they largely, um, you know, are towards developers. So we really need to catch up on that idea of talking to buyers, talking to a business audience. And that is really difficult. You know, we, we have maybe literally millions of people in our developer audience. Uh, we only have, you know, a, a trickle of people coming in from the buyer side. And we really need to populate that audience. The so good news is that that audience can be built and populated just the same way that our developer audience originally uh, built and populated, you know, not only through product, although I think we're adding uh, a, a you know, slew of really nice features that are buyer focused, but uh, through marketing efforts as well. So in the short term, you're going to see us spend a lot of time on the buyers because we haven't. and We naturally have a lot of momentum with developers, but we're not abandoning developers at all. Um, you should still see us uh, doing quite a bit of content to our developers, doing events to our developers, uh, you know, and of course, uh, you know, this is just marketing. So our product and, and everything else will keep going 
as you've seen it go in the past. Uh, it's really critical, you know, it, we, we have to be good with developers, um, but we have to merge in the, uh, the, the buyer audience as well. Uh, the thing that we're trying to do, again, this is kind of maybe a, a way to understand how we talk sometimes in some of the new webcasts we're, we're putting out there and some of the new content we're going to have out there, some of the events we're going to do is we, we need to stop from putting the soft developer, you know, as, as a person at the center of our needs and the center of our audience to talking about the whole spectrum of soft development, which is a business activity you now in most companies, right? It's something that um, we hope will improve company productivity or will, you know, increase revenues. Uh, we'll do any number of things. So it, it's very natural, I think, to talk about the larger spectrum of self-development. And so when you see us, um, you know, do webcasts, when you see us do blog posts, again, you know, you, should, you shouldn't say that this is a concern and this is kind of the guiding light that we have behind, you know, why we're framing a topic a certain way or another way. Um, we really want to kind of capture the whole spectrum of, of self-development, uh, you know, developers, CI, CD, uh, business considerations of these practices, um, how it impacts CIOs, how it impacts revenues, you know, the, the whole spectrum. Right? Um, and the buyer, I always put this as a reference, you know, this is what we mean by buyer. I think it's really important. Um, again, historically, it's not the person that we've concerned ourselves with um, in, in the company, but uh, from a marketing standpoint, uh, this is a type of person that we spend uh, a lot of our energy thinking, uh, you know, about and, and working for. Uh, the company size thing is optional, but, you know, we do want to focus a bit more on some of the larger companies, some of the larger accounts out there. All right. So this is just all a recap. Um, I think it's really important we get on the same page. I'm still getting a lot of questions. I think that that indicate that we're not there. The company is normal. We're a big company. We're moving fast. But I think it's worthwhile to uh, repeat these points and explain them a little bit every time, hopefully not spending too, too much time, uh, you know, getting through it. Um, so in terms of updates um, that are more recent. Um, so I think, you know, the, the big win of the past couple of months, I give an, an update like this, I think around February something, um, February 7, uh, is uh, the, the, the or in, or inbound funnel, you know, the number of people that come in, you know, requesting a deal, um, you know, is largely, I think, has turned around um, and done so, you know, roughly in about two months. Um, and that I think is, is a gigantic win. Uh, you know, it means that we're both driving the right kind of visitors, uh, converting them into leads, you know, because they, they request information from us or they like to join a webcast and they qualify as a MQL and marketing qualified lead, which means they score high enough because of their background or because of action they took on our site um, to become somebody that we want to have a, a, a sales relationship with, you know, the large majority of times because they straight up say like, Hey, you know, I, I'm interested in buying uh, a license for GitLab E. Sometimes it's because they request a trial of GitLab E. Sometimes it's just because, you know, they have the right profile and they're doing the right set of actions on our website. Um, and so after they become MQL and after we have a, a, a representative, a BDR talk to us, um, you know, a lot of them convert into what we call an opportunity, which means like they express a very clear intent to buy GitLab E. And uh, it's so clear that we're able to put uh, a size on that, that contract. Doesn't mean we have closed the contract, but it means, you know, we, we have a sense of where that contract might go in size. Um, so for that to work, you know, there's really a lot of things that need to work A through D. Well, you know, first of all, we need to have the right kind of content topics that get the right kind of attention for the right kind of people. And so that's a lot of rights in there, but it's really difficult uh, to actually get all of these. And I think largely uh, that is working now. We have webcasts on a weekly schedule that talk to uh, topics that are not strictly for buyers, but, but I think do address buyer needs pretty well. Um, a lot of these people, uh, they score pretty well, and we have a new system now to score them and to identify most likely buyers, um, which, is, which is great. Um, and then we're able to start you know, the right conversation with them and get the right kind of deal out of them through the BDR team. Um, and you know, we've also worked on the interface with sales to make sure that, that these deals are quantified correctly and they're handed off correctly. So there's a lot of things that weren't working, and any one of those things could really derail us. But we've gone from largely a funnel that wasn't working to, uh, you know, something that is not completely there yet. I think we have a lot of conversion issues. We have a lot of optimization to do, but it's good enough that we're able to see improvement at every stage of that funnel. And we're able to beat the plan at the bottom of the funnel on the uh, sales qualified leads, you know, uh, dollar targets. So uh, a lot of work still to do there, but I think it was a really good turnaround that largely happened in the last, you know, 60 days. Um, and, uh, you know, it was really a reflection of fantastic work by the content team, by marketing operations, um, and by BDRs, you know, all 
individually in getting uh, parts A through D of that funnel really mapped out. Um, so specifically, I think on the content side, you know, and, and that's, uh, that's Emily uh, Von Hoffman, that's Erica, and that's Rebecca, um, you know, you've seen us put out a lot of really interesting webcasts. We're trying to figure out what the audience wants, what the audience looks like, um, when to talk to them, you know, whether webcast is the right format, what time to put them on, how to make them available afterward. And, uh, you know, some of the most visible, visible things, of course, is some of the, the webcast topics that we've been put, uh, putting out. Um, and I think, you know, again, the reflection of us talking about software development in general, as opposed to just talking to software developers. So, you know, we might go even more businessy in the future, at least on some webcasts. Uh, but again, the goal of these webcasts is very much for buyers. You know, we've got a few questions saying like, oh, why isn't this on YouTube? Or why do I have to register or, or this or that? And, and again, these webcasts, they're not for developers. You know, we want to attract buyers. We want them to leave their email address. We want to set up the right relationship with them. It doesn't mean we're not going to have some other, you know, video online things, um, you know, maybe even a webcast format for developers, right? But that, that will be, I think, a very different thing you'll see maybe come from the DevRel team and, and you'll see us do uh, maybe a bit later in the future once we have some of our buyer content in order. So uh, great you know, work on the webcast. We have blog posts and white papers coming and we're going to keep a tally of some of the interesting content we put out there. Uh, at slash resources on the website. So you can uh, check that out and see, uh, you know, some of the stuff that we're, we're putting out there. And we have a really great uh, schedule coming up. Um, so on this inbound funnel, I also saw fantastic work from the BDR, um, you know, which now at this point is only Chet, uh, Kyla and Molly. Uh, you know, uh, there used to be more people. We're transferring a lot of people to the SDR team. Um, you know, also herself uh, will join the SDR team, I think at some point in the next quarter. And then, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see uh, about hiring some people to replace that. But, you know, in February and March, um, you know, uh, despite a very slow start, I think, again, we started mostly in February uh, for a quarter that, that started in January. We got some really great results, um, I think, from all the reps. Um, you know, we're going to beat the quarter, I think, for uh, overall, we've already beat the quarter, but we're also going to be the quarter individually, I think, for almost every rep we have on the team. At least we're on track for that. And we've really kind of uh, simplified the whole process, making sure the opportunities are flagged correctly and, and transferred correctly to sales. Um, so Q2 will be very difficult. Um, you know, Q2, we should have a lot more reps working than we do now, uh, assuming the leads come in. But, uh, but you know, we think the leads are gonna come in. We think we're gonna be able to hire and, and uh, ramp up rep productivity. And we think Q2 is gonna be great as well. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. It's, uh, it, it's kind of, it was, you know, minor miracle to get Q1 together. I think, again, it's a reflection of the hard work that we did, and we'll see, uh, we'll see, we'll do our best for Q2. Uh, and then operations, again, like behind the scenes, making sure that we had the right setup with Marketo, we had the right scoring, uh, that our landing pages were working well to capture information, um, you know, and that we, we kept the reps, you know, focused on uh, enterprise sales deals, you know, large conversation as opposed to closing some of the, the smaller web direct sales that we have. I think, uh, you know, th this, this is work that absolutely made this possible. You know, without all this, we, you had no prayer at turning the funnel around. So again, a lot of work to do on the inbound funnel, but, you know, I was really energized that as a company, we were able to uh, turn that around in the last 60 days or so. And, uh, and I'm hoping we keep improving it, optimizing it um, and, uh, and, and beefing up the BDR team. So uh, we're in a good, uh, good position to beat Q2 as well. So uh, stuff that's in progress. And again, that's not a reflection of, of, uh, of the people. I think it's more a reflection of these things are complicated, take a lot more time uh, than solving some of our um, inbound funnels, which is mostly digital. And it's mostly like day-to-day -day conversations that, that we can kind of iterate and improve on very, very quickly. But we have more kind of long running uh, uh, projects going on in other teams in marketing uh, that I think are training in the right way as well. And, and I wanted to acknowledge. So on the product marketing side, we've already done a lot, um, you know, and, and, and the product marketing, if you don't know, they basically take care of, um, you know, uh, framing our product in the right way for uh, buyer conversation, including delivery of uh, the sales presentation that um, our reps give, uh, including, uh, you know, the, the language we use on our website to talk about the product um, and anything really that kind of helps frame our product uh, towards the buyers. Uh, so fantastic work there by Amara. Uh, I think again, in the last 60 days, um, we've done great work on uh, some of the basic sales deck, uh, collateral that's around our product, the website, um, and we're working now on demos and we're working on customer stories, which again are critical elements to help us close uh, deals. Uh, there's a lot of work there. You know, we're trying to do regular surveys to see satisfaction, um, you know, on the assets that we prepare. We're already at 70%. 
uh, mostly that's a reflection of us, you know, not having uh, delivered some of the essential uh, marketing element that sales need at this stage. But I know satisfaction is improving really quickly, and we're going to try to aim for uh, a 90% plus, uh, I think, in the next couple of months. And I have no, uh, no doubt that we'll get there. In field marketing, um, you know, we've tried a lot of things recently. We've had great success with trade shows. Um, in the last couple of weeks, we've been trying to do more first party events where we organize ourselves. The idea there is to really own the relationship at the event, uh, to be the only point of focus of the event as opposed to being one, you know, uh, exhibitor uh, uh, among a hundred or, or more at a big trade shows. And, um, you know, we have some hits and misses there. I think it's completely normal. We're trying it out because we think if we succeed, if we build the right audience for these events, this will be tremendously uh, worthwhile to us, um, but it's not going to work overnight, and we know this. So uh, I think some really interesting work going on from, from Emily Kyle there, and uh, it's something I'm really, really, really excited about. Uh, and then on developer relations, you know, we have developer advocacy team and, and a community advocacy team. So on the, on the advocacy team, um, Amanda has been working behind the scenes on, on some new programs, some really exciting things. Um, you know, one of them is to start doing free in-person trainings about CI, CD, of course, with GitLab. Um, and the goal there, again, is to give people a product first experience. Uh, you know, uh, as quickly as possible, train people that might be working in, in larger companies or smaller companies about the advantages of both CICD as a concept and, of course, you know, GitLab as a platform and, um, and, and kind of seed developer adoption that way um, in different cities, different places, different media groups, different conferences. And uh, we have a bunch of dates lined up uh, starting in April that I'm really, really excited about. Um, again, down the road, this could be something that we do for uh, some of our customers, uh, some of our prospects, some of our partners. Um, and again, we want to figure out the format. We're going to need to do it on our own for a little bit and, and focus, uh, you know, kind of the broad market first and foremost. But I think it's a really uh, popular, successful format. We could tweak into a number of different directions um, and uh, generate a lot of excitement uh, for GitLab in a very uh, direct one-to-one -one way. So very excited about that. And of course, putting that content online at some point as well. And then the other program she's working on is, uh, you know, uh, something we're calling GitLab Text for now, this idea of, of identifying and enabling people in the community that uh, want to talk more about GitLab, want to do more in the community about GitLab, or that supporting, um, answering questions on Stack Overflow, uh, organizing a GitLab meetup group, uh, giving a talk at a, at a local conference. And so finding... Uh, you know, finding them and, and then finding ways to uh, give them the tool they need to succeed uh, is kind of the, the name of that second program. And so um, we, we have some interesting people identified already through events. Uh, and, you know, we're going to try to keep working with them and expand kind of uh, our directory of, of really qualified people. Maybe turn that into uh, something, you know, not a strict sense certification, but something that helps us. Um, you know, anoint uh, community leaders, um, anoint people that really know about GitLab that you can ask for help locally, um, that kind of thing. So we'll see what happens with that, but uh, something I think can be very, very promising as well and would be the sign of a well-functioning, uh, you know, uh, community. Uh, community advocates, you know, have been doing a, a fantastic job. Uh, Connor and Mattia, you know, just uh, delivering really great response times uh, on all the channels where people ask us questions, especially after some of our big launches or some of our big blog posts that blow up on Acco News. I know it's a really stressful uh, kind of job, but they're doing great, um, you know, keeping response time in general a handful of hours on Twitter, Hacker News. Uh, Facebook and the comments on our blog and uh, you know I, again I think it's it's fantastic that we get to engage the community with that level of precision and speed and um, I know we're trying to improve our tooling trying to improve our response time even further but you know really uh, fantastic work same thing from design I think uh, delivery speed is fantastic satisfaction same thing measures for survey already at 90 percent and there's a lot of concurrent requests you know things big and small uh, like the Gitter acquisition <laughs> that's a big that's a big project and then you know, we're also trying to iterate on some CIC logos and, and any number of things. So uh, a great work by Luke on all that. So two bigger projects to wrap up, um, you know, the Gitter acquisition, I think was well received. Uh, I don't think marketing can take a lot of credit for that. I think Gitter did a really good job as a company, as a brand. Um, and of course, all the people that work there. Um, and, uh, you know, we just try to, to make like a, a sensible announcement uh, that, uh, that, that went well with the community. Down the road, what we want to do is try to integrate uh, the brand and the experience a bit more into the GitLab brand to kind of make sure we get the most out of the acquisition. We're not going to change the product fundamentally, I think, or, or, or do anything like that. But we've talked about changing their logo, changing uh, a bit of the color scheme, maybe, and a few things like that to make it clear that 
uh, if you discover Gitter, you understand it's a GitLab product and maybe you want to try GitLab a bit more. Um, so let's see. All right, I'm back in this. Yay for Google Calendar Alerts. Um, all right, and so on the positioning side, um, that's kind of another big project um, that's going to be maybe a bit less visible for, for longer, which is to just try to really codify and investigate some of the assumptions that we have, we all have behind a go-to-market strategy. You know, as you can tell from the first few slides that, slide that went through today, I really like to make sure we're on the same page when the big things, <laughs> and then we can talk about the details. And uh, I get that feeling sometimes that, uh, you know, the, the go-to-market strategy that we have as a whole, uh, as a company, you know, uh, isn't necessarily, uh, we're not still on the same page, you know, uh, about what we mean there. So, you know, I'm trying to make sure that we do this well, uh, you know, I should say Amara is really uh, leading the work on this and I'm, I'm just helping out here and there, uh, but really trying to codify, you know, what is that we're going after, where we go after them, what we think we're going to be successful as them. And so similarly to, to the early slide in the marketing index, something maybe that would be useful to the company at large to understand some of the decisions and how we prioritize features maybe or how uh, we uh, dress up our homepage or uh, what kind of events we do. And, and I think, uh, you know, it, it's a set of assumptions we should all be a little bit more familiar with. So hopefully it's something will be useful uh, with the company. Um, hiring, just so you know, we're hiring for a lot of jobs. We need your help finding these people. Uh, you can send them to me, you can send them to people ops. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the process is. You could just encourage them to apply, I guess that's, that's fine. But if they have questions, they want to talk to somebody. I'm happy to talk to them. I'm sure people up would be happy to talk to them as well. And, uh, and really the, the list of kind of relatively senior position that we need to hire for um, immediately. You know, we need a, a CMO and a VP of marketing uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, we're, we're really hoping to find a, a good candidate soon so I can go back to being unemployed um, as quickly as possible. And then uh, we need uh, senior help for product marketing, lead gen, uh, DevRel, and we need a lot of business development reps, BDR, as I said, to make Q2. So um, anybody you think would be a great fit for that, anybody you worked with in the past, um, you know, uh, that, that you think would be amazing, let us know. I think we'd love to work with people you know and trust and, uh, and make sure we benefit from their experience, their knowledge, um, and all the good things they can do for GitLab. That's it. Do we have any questions? I think we have, yes, eight minutes for questions, maybe less, if people are not inspired. There's stuff in the chat. All right. Apparently we are recording, so it's great. Um, and then, all right, some comment about Motorola and Google after the acquisition. I think we're gonna to try to make sure that the, the Gitter acquisition works better than the, the Motorola acquisition for Google. There's a lot of back and forth on that one, but, but point well taken on the branding. I think we're gonna to try to make sure that it lives on as a, as a separate name because obviously a very recognized, um, uh, well-liked name, uh, but you know, that, that, that if people experience Gitter the product that they understand it's, it's now part of GitLab and they get every opportunity to try out the larger GitLab product and uh, you know, the company as well. Oh, this is Phil here with sales. Uh, just have a question around the case studies. Um, you know, talking with a lot of clients, you know, that are on CE, trying to get them to move to EE, uh, finding those uh, quantitative metrics saying, hey, if you purchase EE, we're going to save your developers 10 minutes a day, which equates to $250,000 a year if you have 100 developers. How are we going about finding that data? Because I know a lot of clients I speak with aren't able to track it down to that fine grain. Uh, but that would be extremely helpful for the sales team, but basically ROI uh, case studies. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I, I think we want to find that information as quickly as possible. And right now I think we have to go through the customer we have the best possible relationship with. I think at a high level, the true answer to that question is we need to have better relationships, deeper relationship with our customers. I don't mean that that sells and doing a good job. I just mean as a company, we need to get closer, um, you know, starting from the marketing side and, and, uh, and, and going to the engineering side, we need to make sure that they know more people at GitLab and they feel energized by our presence. You know, the same thing that maybe some of our friends at Ticketmaster feel, you know, they, they're, they're talking to us every week, it looks like, uh, trying to get info and trying to do things with us. So, you know, I think the, the true answer to your question is we need to get there. Um, in the short term, I think Amar is digging, trying to get access to as many uh, uh, data points and as many customers as possible. Um, and 
seeing what they see at a high level. And, you know, we're going to try to also make sure that they benefit from some of our uh, product features to track that and then report that back to us, um, you know, voluntarily. Um, the other thing I feel like we need to do is, you know, really need to position ourselves correctly. And, and I think uh, one of the things that we're, we're trying to do, and, and this is a reflection of that, but maybe we can push even higher, is, uh, you know, Try, try not to get too, too bogged down in specific use cases and features, but try to make the sale as strategic as possible. I understand that what you're saying is a reflection already of, of a process that's way more strategic than it used to be um, and way more business centric than it used to be. But I'm wondering if in the short term there's something we can do that's not, doesn't get us, uh, you know, discussing specific individual productivity details, uh, but gets people to see uh, the larger cloud native idea production, you know, conversation in a way that, you know, escapes, uh, you know, uh, giving people some, some very fine point numbers on this or that. But I know it's very tricky and I know sales is doing everything they can already. So, uh, you know, marketing will do everything it can to deliver uh, the numbers for the conversation you're in right now, even if we try to uh, change the conversation we're having in the future. Does that make sense to everybody in sales? Yeah, it does. I mean, I, I just want to second that. I mean, maybe there's a simple... ROI calculator. It doesn't need to be really hard. Maybe it's just a, how many people do you have? What is your fully burdened cost? Right. What is the percent savings? And it's just got a sliding bar where they can kind of, we give them, these are some industry averages. Maybe that helps the buyer or the developer become more of a buyer because they're forced with having to build a business case and they don't generally do that. They want to sling code. Right. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair. You know, little it, tools like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe it just gets the conversation started and we help facilitate it. I don't know. Yeah. No, I see the comments now, you know, talking about like this from the C install base specifically. That makes, that makes a lot more sense to, to me. I think, you know, for, for, for some straight EE sales, um, uh, some of the outbound stuff, I feel like positioning ourselves uh, even higher than, than, you know, individual ROI would be better because otherwise we get into... Uh, you know, a, a very fine grained calculation of what does EES and EEP add on top of CE, and then they start counting dollars on stuff that's that's really not that precise, right? You know, even if we give them a productivity calculator. But I see the the value point of GitLab is in improving that productivity, um, and specifically in some of the smaller deals. So I think the idea of a calculator is a very good one. Um, you know, I'm hoping we get some metrics for that based on uh, some of the product updates and, and lifecycle, you know, metrics that um, I know we've been shipping. So I think that's probably the fastest way to get there. And um, I can make sure there's an agenda item from uh, marketing to follow up on that. If that seems like that would help with some of the CE deals, uh, C2E deals you're looking at. All right. We have three minutes. We have three minutes and chat hasn't killed me yet. So I must be doing all right somewhere. No complaints. Maybe it's going to be after the call. He's waiting for me to be done with my, my, my personal update at 8.30. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, um, I'm always on Slack. I'm on the marketing channel. Um, ask ask questions, I guess, um, and then I'll answer them if nobody does. does. And then, um, yeah, just make sure you're comfortable with some of the early slides. I think it's really important um, to be on the same page there. Uh, if you have any question whatsoever about that or about any of the small stuff we're doing, just pop into the marketing channel. Thank you so much.